Hi, welcome to One Awesome Autistic. Gosh, I'm not saying that in a long time, but I wanted to stick uh, long, sort of like more content themed, less about me. So in this video, I kind of want to talk about like financial situations of autistic people because in the UK, 85% of autistic people are unemployed. That means living off benefits, which for a lot of people, me included, Benefits don't cover outgoings, particularly if you're disabled, because you tend to have a higher outgoings. So I wanted to talk a little bit about ways that you can find out what you're entitled to, some little ways that you can save money, and then some little ways of earning a little bit extra money without like hugely affecting benefits. First, finding out what you are entitled to. If you struggle with everyday life because of your disability, you should be entitled to PIP. I have lots of videos about PIP because I've gone through the process, I've won my tribunal, it was a hard slog, but it was worth it in the end for me. Before applying for PIP, contact Citizens Advice or contact local council if they have a welfare department and get some help. If you have a support worker, you, you can use your support workers help or somebody to help you fill out forms and help you with the process because it is very very hard but it is worth doing if you win in the end because you get all that money back paid as well if you win so you're not losing out on anything if it takes a while so PIP is definitely a good place to start the lowest amount of PIP the living element is £60 a week that's due to go up by just under £2 a week in April filming this in March 2022 so if you're watching this at some point in the future some of this information may be outdated. To find out if you're entitled to anything else the two places which I've just mentioned are great places to start. Not all councils have a welfare rights department but some do. You can typically google that. Google welfare rights and the name of your local council and if they have it if you can't find the information out and unsure, typically your local council will have a generic contact us page with an email address. You can just email them and just ask them if they have a welfare rights department that can help you with benefits. If they don't or that just seems like too much hassle, Citizens Advice can help you with these things because Citizens Advice do have welfare rights. Some people's benefits may also be wrong and you may actually not be getting as much as you should be. So there's also that as well. They will help you calculate that because if you are unable to work, there are different tiers. I'm on the limited capability, which means that I can get support in applying for a job and they, I can only be told to sort of apply for jobs that I am able to do. They can't force me into full-time work if I can't do full-time work. However, there's a higher tier than that, which basically says you are unable to work. And that higher tier is about £200 a month more in money as well. So there is that. If you're not in the right tier, then that is something that they can help you with. If you've gone through all that and all else fails, if you really are struggling, and you are on a low income or you are on benefits and in particular if you're having to choose between sort of heating your house and eating food then there are food banks out there. I have never used a food bank myself so I don't know how quite how you go about doing it but Citizens Advice is definitely a go-to place you can ask about that or if you have to see somebody at the job centre you could always ask them about it as well. Never be too proud and suffer if you are really really hungry and you cannot afford food then food, that's what food banks are there for to help you out. There is also something called DHP which is discretionary housing payment and you can get it for a limited amount of time. Anybody can sort of apply for it but you're not guaranteed obviously to get it. It's not the easiest thing to get and it is very very intrusive because they want to know all your bank details everything so if you don't have any money in bank and you are struggling and struggling to pay the rent then you may qualify for discretionary housing payment again that is something you can google and you apply through your council 
You can also get help for applying for that as well with citizens advice or if you see somebody at the job centre and you're lucky enough that they're supportive, you can also ask them about it as well. There's a website called Turn to Us and it's Turn, T-U-R-N, and then the number two, us, all in one word. Turn to Us are a website that helps with benefits. But one of the things that I found out with them is that there are also grants. So for example, if you are out of work, you're struggling and you have a pet, then there are grants for pets. So if you need to pay any medical care and you're struggling to pay for that, you could get a grant. So you don't need to pay it back when it's a grant, it's not a loan. They will literally give you money. But there are other grants to help you out as well. You can search what grants are in your area. You can search by medical condition because some grants are through charities that are medical condition specific. So that is another website to turn to if you are really struggling. So now let's talk a little bit about ways of saving a little bit of money as well. Or getting kind of like some money back. So for example, shopping online is a lot easier, particularly if like for me, to go to most supermarkets, it will cost me nearly £7 in bus fare. It would be cheaper to pay for delivery. Now, however, what's even better than that is using websites like Quidco. And I'll put a link to a lot of these information in the descriptions below as well. So if you forget anything, I'll link to as many of these websites as I can. I use Quidco because I found it is the best one out there to give cash back. Every time you shop, shop online instead, have it delivered, makes it a lot easier, but you also get cash back. So I got, I think I earn about £10 in cash back around Christmas by buying a few of my Christmas presents online. That's not huge amounts, I know, but it's better than nothing. And currently I've got about £20 sat in there just from last year alone. And that was without doing online food shopping. So with online food shopping, Hopefully that will start to go up and it's a little bit extra money than I can use for Christmas. Look at different bank accounts. People tend to stick to what they know and autistic people definitely stick to what they know. However, switching bank accounts could earn you money. I am currently with Santander and one thing that I just keep meaning to get round to because it will put a bit extra money in my account is a 123 account. There are two different types of these accounts. There's a light one and then there's like a, a full one essentially. And you do pay for it. However, you get cash back on your direct debits. So for me, living alone, all of my stuff comes out in direct debit pretty much. There is a calculator on Santander's website which will tell you how much you would earn back. So it'll tell you if it's worth it. But there are also other bank accounts that will pay you to switch. I know, I think it was NetWest used to do one where if you switched and stayed for a year, you got like £150. And other websites do it as well if you use them as a main bank account. The one thing to look out for though is switching bank accounts and having lots of different bank accounts can negatively affect your credit score. So bear that in mind. But what some savvy people do is have two bank accounts. If you have enough direct debits going out, then this is a way to maximise your money. For people on low income and benefits, the government does a help to save account. Basically, they give, they give you 50% of what you save or something like that. I can never remember the full details of this and I wish I'd written it down. However, you're getting money for free. So, you can put in as little as a pound a month or as, as much as £50 a month and that's it. You can't go over £50 and I know that might seem a lot for a lot of people anyway but even if you've got £20 you can afford to save. You can save for a maximum of four years. So the maximum you would save over two years is £1,200 but then the government is going to give you money for that So and they're going to give you it based on what's in the account. You can draw money out at any point, however, you won't get as much back. So then if you do it again for the next year, you'll get the same amount again. So not only have you saved a fair chunk of money, but you're also going to get another chunk for free as well. So that is something worth looking into. 
To find better deals on the things you're already paying, you can use U-Switch. They will actually switch things over to you. One of the best ways to save money is internet because typically you get a deal for 12 months, 24 months or what have you and then after that the contract ends, it goes up and charges you an extortionate amount and you're on a rolling contract. So a lot of these you only have to give maybe a month's notice and you can switch to something else. It is worth switching once your deal is up to then get a better deal from somewhere else. If you're also paying a lot for your energy bills, then that might be another way to switch. I always look at money saving expert. Martin Lewis is like on the TV. This is what he does, tries to save people money because he often posts deals on there. So when Black Friday deals are coming up, he posts all, all the best deals and things like that. But he also posts ways to save money, money you may be entitled to, all those sorts of things. So that's another website to have a quick look at. If you sign up for the newsletters, you get a weekly newsletter and it tells you all the latest information. Now, one thing that can affect your benefits slightly, but can earn you a little bit of money. Now, if you're on benefits and you earn anything, you obviously have to declare it, but they don't take it off your benefits in total. So the first £20 you earn is yours. So every month you could earn £20 doing something and that 20 quid is yours. That's next to £20 a month in your pocket. After that, for every pound you earn, they take 63p off of your benefits. But there are ways to earn money from home, like websites like Fiverr, which is F-I-V-E and then two R's on it. But again, I'll link that below. If you have a skill, that is transferable, proofreading, anything like that, writing short scripts. You can have a look at the types of jobs that are on there and see if it's something that you are able to do. And you can advertise your services. So you could start off small and the idea was is that you basically offered your services for a fiver. Now in regards to tax, working self-employed you can earn, you have like a test year so you can earn up to £1,000 in one year without having to declare it as self-employment. And I've just learned this recently because I've just done like a little mini short course thing that has told me this information. So you don't have to declare that as self-employed online to the tax, but you do still have to obviously declare it to the Job Centre for your benefits. However, if you're at home anyway, then this is a way to utilise a little bit of time. I've done a couple of these in the past when I've, when I've been working, just earning an extra little bit of money on the side. And I've basically done things, just been sat in my pyjamas, in bed, quickly done it. And I've earned five pounds doing a little job where I wrote like a little tiny script for like an advert on a YouTube channel. And it earned me five pounds and took me five minutes. So that is another thing to look into if you have transferable skills. Also, you can actually learn these skills for free by going on Open University. So if you look at Fiverr and the type of things that are being asked for and you think that's something actually that interests me and I could do, have a look on the Open University. They have got tons of courses that are free and they're only a few hours long and you will learn the basics of some of these tasks and you might be able to earn just a little bit of money on the side on those websites. I think that's it. I think I've rambled on for too long, but hopefully you will find that helpful. If you managed to get through all of that, then well done and thank you for sticking with me. But I will, like I say, try and link all of the things I've spoken about in the description below so that then you can click on which ones interest you and hope that helps at least one person out there. This is all information that has been given to me along the past few years, so I'm just paying it forward and please pay it forward to other people as well if anybody needs any help. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.